Welcome to our human resource uh, management lesson. Uh, today we are looking at uh, uh, foundational theories of uh, human resource management and the theory we are looking at is uh, a human capital theory and in this human capital theory uh, we are going to look at uh, how the human capital theory uh, was formulated, when it was formulated, who formulated it, uh, what are some of the characteristics of uh, human capital and uh, also the application of uh, the human capital theory. Now, the human capital theory asserts that uh, human capital is a key determinant of economic success in all industries, in all industries, in all workplaces. Uh, human capital is defined as this, the knowledge, the knowledge, skills, assets, and experiences that an individual has which add value to a company. And when an employee comes to the work environment, that employee comes with the knowledge which they have, they come with the skills which they have, they come with the assets which they have, they come with the experiences. So these are the experiences that an organization is expected to harness, hence the importance of uh, motivation, so that this individual can be set to be able to at least uh, uh, have this particular uh, assets uh, useful within an organizational context. The term human capital was originated by Schulz in 1961, who elaborated on uh, his concept in 1981, and the elaboration indicated that human abilities are either inert, that is inborn, or acquired attributes that are valuable and can be enhanced uh, by appropriate investment. So, dear Lana, what this theory is uh, informing us is that uh, uh, though some of the attributes may be inborn, some of the attributes may be acquired, but when it comes to harnessing them in a work environment, an organization can be able to invest in people to enhance this in art, to enhance these acquired attributes for the betterment of a given work environment. And that's why Motivation is important, and that's how the human capital theory can be able to help drive business and make the workplace much more uh, worthwhile to be able to invest in workers and get a return on that investment. So what are some of the characteristics of uh, human capital? Characteristics. Characteristics of uh, human capital. Characteristics of a human capital. So it is important that uh, we mention uh, some of the characteristics uh, of human capital, given that we have indicated that uh, human capital refers to the knowledge, the skills, the assets, and experiences that individuals have within a given environment. So, what are some of the characteristics uh, of uh, uh, human capital? Uh, that an individual should exhibit or that should define uh, what uh, an individual has. So one of the characteristics of uh, human capital is uh, education. Uh, education. Education is a characteristic of human capital. So the kind of education, the set of skills, uh, the set of, no of knowledge an individual has acquired through education it could be general knowledge or it could be specific knowledge, but the educational background an individual has uh, captured uh, is a characteristic of uh, human capital. Then um, the experience, the experience, experience. Now, an individual, for example, has worked uh, in the engineering field for, let's say, five years, 10 years, or somebody has worked as a company secretary for two years, three years, 10 years. So that experience that particular person has acquired, and also the general experience on life activities. Somebody has uh, traveled, uh, somebody has, uh, uh, has been, for example, uh, to different countries, to different uh, institutions. So that experience put together uh, becomes uh, an asset which that particular person can be able to use in a given work environment. Then there is also the element of tenure. A tenure. 
So if you look at uh, an individual, an individual, for example, could be given a contract, a contract of, say, five years, or a contract of eight years, or a contract of 10 years, or could be in a permanent and pensionable position, or could be in a temporary, for example, position in a given work environment. So the tenure that an individual has been given, so if an individual is given a tenure for five years in a permanent and pensionable, for example, capacity or permanent basis, then it is expected that that particular person can be able to sit down and will not be looking for a job elsewhere if the environment is conducive and be able to work and contribute towards achievement of organizational goals. Then also the health, the health status, the health status or the well-being of a given individual, it could be body, it could be mind, and the well-being of an individual, that also contributes because it is expected that for somebody to be able to give optimum output in an organization, then that particular person should be in sound health. So that uh, uh, health status of an individual is important within a given uh, working environment. Then you also have uh, the aspect of training. Uh, training. So the kind of training an individual receives, that training could be on the job training, it could also be off the job training or a combination and ongoing training. So that again influences uh, the kind of uh, human capital any organization can have. So organizations that put emphasis on education, experience, tenure, health, training, these kind of organizations, if they are observed keenly and these things are done in a proper and progressive way, those kind of organizations are likely to have a superior human capital that can be used to be able to make a contribution towards uh, the realization of organizational goals. So these ones, uh, Lana, are some of the characteristics of uh, human capital. So how can we apply or use uh, uh, human capital theory? So the application, application, application of uh, human capital, uh, human capital theory, uh, application of the human capital theory. So as a student of management or as a student of uh, 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 any uh, discipline. This uh, human capital the theory will come in handy uh, when it comes to uh, making decisions. And as we have indicated, if you are looking at a theory that underpins uh, knowledge, skills, uh, experiences that uh, individuals have, then this can be able to inform decisions which are likely to be made in uh, organizations. So one of the areas uh, can be used, can be used uh, to shape uh, government policies, uh, government policies. So if uh, government policies are being formulated, let us take for example in the area of education, you are deciding uh, that human capital is an asset, then if you go to many countries including Kenya, you will realize that uh, much of the budget that is uh, used by government, a big chunk goes to the Ministry of Education to be able to look at uh, education at different levels, whether it is basic, whether it is uh, at the secondary level, post-secondary level, university level. So if you look at that budget, it could be informed by the thinking that uh, an organization or a country that develops a strong capital base in terms of human capital can be able to progress as a community and so on. So that is one area. Then two, underpin, underpin, underpin uh, research uh, in, uh, uh, in management, uh, including, including uh, human resource management, uh, human resource management. So if you look at uh, uh, studies that are being done, these studies which inform uh, decision making, so the human resource, uh, the human capital theory can inform 
studies being done in the management area in general and in the human resource management area in particular to be able to assist organizations make uh, informed decisions. So there is also the area of uh, uh, employee, uh, employee selection, uh, employee selection and placement. Uh, placement, employee selection and placement. So when you are selecting employees, uh, you are placing employees in particular positions. The human capital theory can be able to assist. There is also the area of uh, uh, training, uh, training and development, uh, training and development. So those two areas, employee selection and placement, uh, training and development of workers, we have indicated that you may have what you call on-the-job training. You may have also what you call uh, uh, off-the-job training. You may also want to, uh, number five, uh, determination. Uh, determination uh, of the value, uh, value of jobs. Uh, or job evaluation, uh, job evaluation, determination of value of jobs or job evaluation. So when you are looking at uh, uh, how jobs contribute to uh, uh, a given work environment or job evaluation, you may look at the human uh, capital theory, look at its thinking and uh, be able to make a decision. If you are looking at uh, the value of jobs in a job hierarchy, are this particular job, for example, uh, having equal value? Are they having equal measure among other issues and so on? Then there is the issue of uh, 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 implementation. You can talk about formulation, formulation and implementation, uh, implementation of human resource, uh, human resource management. Uh, human resource management uh, strategies, formulation and implementation of uh, human resource management uh, strategies. <clears throat> so that is one area in which uh, the human capital can, for example, assist an organization in making decisions. Then there is also explanation, explanation uh, of uh, investments, investments in uh, uh, people, uh, people, uh, and uh, so when you have, uh, you need to make investments in people. Uh, for example, these areas we are talking about in terms of exposing workers and so on, uh, it is possible that the human capital theory can be used to be able to explain why there is a huge investment in terms of uh, uh, people. There is also the element of uh, determination, uh, determination, determination uh, of the performance, determination of the performance uh, of the workforce, uh, workforce, determination of the performance of the workforce. So if you are looking at how uh, the workforce is performing, then you can be able to look at the human resource, uh, the human capital theory and look at the workforce and be able to provide uh, an explanation in relation to how uh, people or workers are performing. So Lana, uh, we are looking at uh, our continuing lessons in foundational theories of uh, human resource management and uh, we have looked at the human capital theory and uh, when you look at uh, the human capital theory, we have had a chance to look at uh, the human capital theory where we have indicated that the theory asserts that human capital is a key determinant of economic success in all areas of operations. And uh, human capital is defined as the knowledge, skills, assets, and experiences that an individual has which add value to a company or an entity. The term human capital uh, theory was originated by Schultz in 1961 uh, who elaborated his concept in 1981 that uh, human abilities are either inert or acquired attributes that are valuable and can be enhanced by appropriate investments. 
Then we have looked at the characteristics of uh, human capital and we have indicated that some of the factors or characteristics of uh, human capital are number one, education, number two, experience, number three, tenure, number four, health, and number five, training. Then we have gone ahead now and looked at application of human capital theory and we have indicated that uh, one, can be used to shape government policies, two, underpin research in management including human resource management, number three, uh, employee selection and placement, number four, training and development, number five, uh, determination of value of jobs uh, or job evaluation, number six, formulation and implementation of uh, human resource management strategies, number seven, explanation of investment in people, number eight, determination of the performance uh, of the workforce. So those are just some of the areas uh, in which the human capital can be uh, applied. So Lana, before we finish and come to the end of our lesson today, you have an assignment. You have an assignment and your assignment is assignment. Assignment. Examine examine the ways the ways uh, through which examine the ways uh, through which uh, the human capital theory uh, human capital uh, theory uh, may uh, be applied may be applied in organizations, may be applied in organizations. So dear Lana, that's your assignment. Uh, examine the ways through which the human capital theory may be applied in organization. So we have come to the end of our lesson. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>